Hi guys, welcome to Irish 20 Vlogs. Myself and Kian Menton here today. We're doing an FAI Cup final preview between Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk. Just a quick one before we get into that, guys. I just wanted to talk about the reaction to our Premier Division Team of the Year team. Uh, obviously, we both picked separate teams. We'd no Dundalk players in them and we got absolutely battered. Uh, by Dundalk fans in particular. I just want to say, though, there was a few people saying we hadn't picked them because we're biased and things like that. We didn't pick them because we're biased. We picked them because we didn't feel like any of them deserved to get in the team. There was an argument for Hooban, I have to say. After that, was difficult. I've seen other team of the years, and most have seen one Dundalk player in the team of the year. So uh, just relax a little bit, chill a little bit in YouTube land, lads. Uh, <laughs> we'll just get into the video, Keane. So guys, on to the FAI Cup preview between Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk. The record holders, Shamrock Rovers, are 25. Dundalk have 11 FAI Cups. Shamrock Rovers, obviously, the current holders. Dundalk lost one in 2018. They met in the final last year as well, Keane, which was a bit of a showpiece. Uh, big crowd at the match. Uh, great occasion, great atmosphere. Unfortunately, we're not going to get that this year. That's the only thing, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's a shame for that because the two best teams in the country are going toe-to-toe -to -toe again. And look, I know Dundalk finished toward, but I still think, like, I still think it's between Dundalk and Rovers next year for the title. Uh, that's no disrespect to Bowles. I just thought, I just think Dundalk now, especially after getting into Europe and a few Bob coming that way again. You know, like they always had a few Bob, but you know they have a few more in their pocket now. But look, I says it, it's it all it all depends on their recruitment. It all depends on who they bring in. They need to bring in the right caliber of player, and like, because it looks like it's going to be a big change over. So. But I personally think right now, in this minute in time, it's the two best teams in the league, uh, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And look, last year, 30-odd thousand at the game, amazing atmosphere for, for the League of Ireland game. Like uh, like I said, you'd have, this is our showpiece event. This is the event that, like, we look at the date. Like, this is the, this is the event that I'm actually, like, I go on holidays in the off-season. But I always book it a week after the cup final, just in case, because uh, it'd kill me now. If, uh, well, I wouldn't go on holidays, let's be honest, if Pat's were ever in it. Uh, but, you know, it's one of them things that everybody looks out for. It's always the first weekend in November, the first Sunday. And, you know, it's, it's just a great event. It just puts the league down. It, it, it just tidies up the league nicely and tidies up the season. And, you know, everyone goes off happy, or you go off crying if you don't get it, if you don't win it. You know, but it's it, it is. It's a great game. It's a great event. Uh, it's ten euro tickets as well. Like you, you know, you can't like. I, I I always found it funny, especially like, you know, I was watching Pats versus Atlanta the week before the cup final in two thousand and four. Then, and and people were paying fifteen quid into that. You know what I mean? And then you're looking at <laughs> you're going to the cup final for a tenner. I think I, I do. I think it's an amazing price for the cup final. Uh, I think everyone just goes out to it because you know it's in many ways it's nearly bigger than the league. Like you know because you're going to the Aviva because you have that day out as such. It's, look, it's a, I, I much prefer. Believe it or not, I'd love to win both. But if I had to pick one, I, I love the cup. I think it's just a great day out. Look. It's it's a great day out. Obviously, it's not as good as if you lose, but it's still a fantastic day out. And it's it's going to be di different, and it's going to be a little bit strange this year. I think uh, Dundalk have the upper hand in terms of playing. In uh, they know they know it fairly well at this stage, but you know, Rovers best team in the country this year. Uh, haven't haven't got beaten competitively at all this season, and you know who knows. It feels like though it's more than the cup final a little bit because Shamrock Rovers are playing Dundalk. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Rovers have just won the league. They've taken it away from Dundalk. They took the cup away from them last year. Yeah. Dundalk, by their standards, I don't care what anyone says, but their standards have been disappointing this season, right? This is an opportunity, though, for Dundalk to lay down, not only win the cup, but lay down a serious marker for next season. Okay. And it's also an opportunity for Shamrock Rovers to really, you know, put their... You know, stamp their authority on this league as such, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's a big game for both sides. Uh, I think it's bigger for Dundalk. Like, if you had to look at the importance of both games, like, I still think Rovers are the best team in the country by a mile, whether they win this or not. They uh, finished two points above Dundalk in an 18 game season. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I just, I think the dog, or I think we're over, sorry, are on a different level. Uh, I, like, put it this way, I think if Rovers played in these European games, I'd say they'd be a lot tighter and they'd probably got a lot more points out of it than Dundalk, if you were to put it that way as well. I just think they have the players, they have the, the recruitment was spot on. Now they're reaping the rewards for that now. You know, they gave Bradley time. I think he was always two games away from the sack up until last year. That's what he was. Since he came in, he was always two games away from the sack. Uh was Banners at one point a couple of years ago, wasn't there? Yeah, there yeah. Banners, yeah. He 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 was very he was very, he was very bad, you know, at at the start. But no, they stuck with him. He brought in the right caliber of player. He brought he brought in some really really talented players there. Uh, the right players, look, like I said it's important. He brought in the right characters, the right players, the winners, and you know it's Dundalk. Look, like I says after this cup final. They're going to go through an awful lot of change whether they win it or not. So I think it's a lot of importance for Dundalk to win it. I think, uh, you know, it'll be an absolute disaster if they don't win anything this season. But it's just big off for next season because if they win the Cup, they have something to hold on to. I think if they lose this, I think the gap men- men- mentality-wise really drops. And, you know, it, a lot of players even may stick or go. Who knows with the cup win? Do you think this match, um, you know, whether they win it or lose, it depends on... Does Filippo stay if they win it? Does Filippo go if they lose it? Do you think it matters, basically? Uh, I don't think it matters. Look, Dundalk can easily go out and win this cup. Uh, I still think they need a new manager. Uh, I really do. do. Do you think they think that, though? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I, to be honest, I think it's kind of a weird situation there with Filippo with, with the badges and stuff like that, you know? Uh, I, I don't think it puts the league into a good place as well when you have him not even, not even being allowed on the bench in Europe. And it's just like Shane Keegan, who, let's face it, failed at Galway badly. Is in charge of a European game. <laughs> like it's a, uh, it's a, it's a little bit mad when you put it that way. Look, Shane is a top, top manager, a pro license coach, really, really nice fella as well. Uh, but he's not the manager as such, so. Uh, but I just think Dundalk need to look at. I think they just need to look at it in perspective, and they need to say, "Look, we're miles off where we were." They're not going to get another Stephen Kenny in the blink of an eye. It's going to take time. Uh, but they just, for me, I, I, I won't have, I really won't. And that's nothing against Philippe. Like I said before, lovely fella. One of the nicest men you can meet. Uh, all smiles, all chats when I met him in Richmond. A really, really genuine fella. Uh, nice lad. But at the same point, I could be a genuine nice lad, but you don't want me managing St. Patrick's Athletic, do you? That's it, Luke. Like, you know, I, I don't. <laughs> I think Dundalk, you know, they have built something up over the last couple of years, so I think they deserve to. They deserve to be up there, you know. They deserve to have a good manager in place. Uh, I'm surprised. Now I don't think he probably would have left, but I'm surprised they didn't go for Keith Uh Considering they got into Europe and they have the money, like. They could actually, they could get me in the blink of an eye if they wanted. Now, Keith did have to agree to that. But what I'm saying, if Keith agreed, I think it was only a matter of when. It'd be brilliant. But, yeah. yeah, it would. But at the same time, Keith is happy at bowls. Trevor's happy at bowls. And, you know, but for me, that was the ideal appointment. I don't know. People have asked. I've seen it in the comments. Who who would you get in? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's not for me to make a decision on that. But... I have a funny feeling if they don't go for Filippo, they're going to go abroad. That's just my general opinion yeah. what they'll do. Now, that, that's okay. You can move both ways. You just need to get someone in that's, that's knowledgeable in football as well and not, let's say, a big name. For me, it's a gamble we're taking instead of Filippo, and that's the God on the street. I'd actually agree with that. The Shamrock Rovers beat Cork City 2-1, won 3-2 away to Finn Harps and beat Sligo 2-0 to get to the final. Dundalk beat Waterford 1-0, 2-0 win in Cove, 4-1 win at Daily Men against Bowes and an 11-0 win against Athlone. Who do you think in the Cup has been more impressive so far or had maybe the I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even look at that. Uh, 
like it was three games and the way I'm looking Dallas at it had four because they played the first round. Yeah, had yeah. Four, four. But I always had three games. I, I like they be like league games or always. That's the guy that I should go to be like league games or Dundalk. Uh, I would say Rovers are in a better position going into it, obviously, because they've a league title in their back pocket. But, like, there's not... If you actually break it down, you look at the quality, like... Like I said, we're probably not giving Dundalk players a lot of credit, we, we were told the other day. But what was this now I actually am. But what I'm saying is, like, these players are have been top of the Irish game, like... They're no fools, you know, the likes of Gannon, Mountie. Then you look at... Uh, you look at Magellani. Chris Shields, you know, Michael Duffy, Paddy Hewman. Like, the, the squad is just flying out the door with names and top quality ones at that. So, it's, like, it's, it is going to be a good game, but the dark need to perform. I personally don't like the system in the five at the back. Uh, it's not Dundalk. We need that game, actually, because it's going to get you to go through the lineups. So you think he's going to play for Dundalk? And um, personally, I don't think he'll go three at the back in this game. But who knows? Uh, how do you think they will line up? Because that seemed to be more of a European thing from Dundalk, didn't it? Yeah, but you know, in fairness, he has done it in a couple of league games, and I just don't think Michael Duffy is used enough in that system. I think he's kind of wasted through the centre. You know, he he's great at. He's great at just running at the wing or running at the fullbacks, getting by them, getting in behind, whipping balls in for Paddy Hilbert. And I think that's what they're lacking. Uh, they're lacking that wide play. Like we see in Dan O'Kelly and stuff like that, the pace these players have. You know, they're being wasted playing central. Yeah, I agree. Their team is set up for a 4 3 3 because it's been drilled into them for a long yeah. time under Ken. Um, how do you see Gary Rogers will play in goal? How do you see their back four? Uh, yes, you don't know. You know, you really don't. And I think they're all as good as each other. Uh, they're all as good as each other. Like to be honest with you, any back four that's a dog put out, you're saying that's a great side. Like you know, you're looking at. I personally think you'd probably go with Gartland and Boyle. Uh, Gartland and Boyle. I think he played with a three, and I think uh, I think it's obviously going to be between Clearly and Hall. But I'd push Sean Hall in there. Uh, over clearly, you know, Sean has been there and done that now for many a season. Not to play in a four, I think he's going to play in a five. Uh, I think Gannon would be right wing back. I think uh, Dunnigan would be left wing back. Uh, yeah, just because that's what he's done all season. I think he really likes Dunnigan. And look, Dunnigan for me was always a right back. And you know, you're looking at him playing left wing back, and he's done really well there. Like and. Like he re- he really is doing fantastic, so you know he deserves to play the final. Uh, I think the Chris Shields picks himself in there. Uh, the midfield, I think that's what they need next year. They need like I don't. Sean Muddy has popped up with some amazing goals for them this year. Parting goals. Uh, you have obviously Flores who can put play in there as well. But now he's not a scream my last night. But I don't think. I think the dog needs a central midfielder like around the Finn and Benson like they had. I think that's what they're lacking. But, Has Slocket worked for you, in your opinion? Yeah, he, he's walked, but mm. I think he walks when they're playing away from home. Mm. He walks playing with Chris Shields there, two sitting. Uh, and I think the balance is right when he goes two sitting. But when he starts putting Slocket in there alongside Flores and Slocket is playing ahead of Chris Shields, I don't think the balance is right in the middle, and I think they're losing it a little bit there. You've obviously McElhenney, who will probably play in the center, in the center as well. Kind of like he's, he, people say a ten, he doesn't really play in a ten. He, he's like a he's like a nine and a half. That's what that's why I look at it like he's he's a central midfielder who makes the runs forward, and Chris Shields keeps the back door shut at the back. That's the balance. But you know, Paddy is what a player Paddy is. Like he's. He's excellent. Like before he went away to Cambridge, I think it was. Before he went away, oh, Oldham, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Oldham. Before he went to Oldham, he was like he was frighteningly good, and I don't think, I don't think he's come back the player he was when he left. But at the same time, he had an awful lot of injury problems, and I think Paddy Michael any plays for anyone in the league. If you get him fit, he's he's still yeah. quality in my view. I think he plays for anyone in the league. He really does. I don't think anyone comes close to Paddy McElhenney in that position. Uh, I think you go with, like I says, 
he's going to go with the two with the one the one I think he'll go with Duffy and Huben. Uh, I don't see Huben's out Keane so oh sorry uh, McMillan will probably play I agree with you there you, you touched on it I don't like Duffy in that position at all I really don't I really think it wrecks their balance doing that look at you? Europe you're seeing when Europe like if Duffy if you're a fullback and Duffy's running at you you're in trouble that fella is lightning quick he's excellent on the he'll, he'll just turn you he'll get the ball into the box McMillan is going to stick them away Uh you know, Macmillan gets a shot off in the 18 yard box, it's a goal. He's, he is really that good. He's not getting the credit he deserved. I touched on that a few weeks ago. Uh, I think uh, Macmillan, like, you know, Paddy, Paddy is obviously out, but I, I think Macmillan is just as good as Paddy. Uh, sl- obviously, slightly older and yeah. slightly more experienced. If they were played last night, uh, He's a player that can come off the bench and just cause a few tr- cause a few problems. I won't start him. I think it'd be wrong to start him. To get him off the bench, seventy minutes if you need something, you need to win the game. He's just he just run. He'll run at you. He'll just like he's direct. He runs. He tries to beat the man. He loves going down that left channel and getting the ball in and going across goal. I think he's he's probably up there with the best in the league at doing that. You know, at just running like it's it's something so simple, but it's very effective. So if you got him playing well, uh, coming off the bench, he'd be excellent. Uh, look, I think Dan O'Kelly speaks for himself on the right. I think he'll, uh, he, like I says, they're, they're going to play with five. I think I would say they play with five. So I don't think Dan will start. But if you're getting Dan O'Kelly off the bench, like you know what pace he has, just raw pace, and he's just a proper winger. So he's gonna run at people. He's going to be, he is. He's going to be excellent. So, look, Dundalk. You, you go through that side, and you can't see nothing but Dundalk win. But then you go talk about Rovers, and you can't see nothing but Rovers win. <laughs> yeah, you look at Rovers then, and uh, they'll probably deploy a similar system, won't they? Like, how do you see them going? Obviously, Manus will be in goal, but how do you see their back line, their three centre backs? Speaks for itself, really. Uh, it's gonna go with Finn on the. On the wing back, he's going to go for Eusia on the other wing back. I'd say, or Kavanagh. So that's the only one for me. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think I'd be surprised if he goes with Lafferty. Uh, I think uh, I think Kavanagh and for Eusia. I, I would Kavanagh go. Kavanagh seems to edge at the last few games for some reason, so I don't know if that's a sign. I would go for Kavanagh. Mm. I think he's just he's a he's a better rounded player. For Eusia is a winger that just. That plays up front. He's not a wing back. You know, if you need a goal. If you need a goal in the game, you know, you can put Ferruja on the wing and you can put Ronan Finn right back and just switch the whole thing across. But I think if starting off, I think Dundalk, our rowers need to pay Dundalk their respect. Uh, like they have some serious quality players. Like Sean Gannon is going to pin back Ferruja or Kavanaugh, I think. So. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a good battle there. That's a battle I'm looking forward to looking at. Uh, but you know, you're looking at it, and it's yeah for me, Kavanagh. If I'm thinking now, I'll top my head. I'll go with Kavanagh. It's a back three, Keane. Yeah, back three. I, I say it speaks for itself. We're gonna, it's going to go Lopez, Grace, and Joey. Uh, I can't see can't see anyone. I can't see Scales getting in over these three. Uh, look, Scales an excellent player, but. I think them three has nailed on to start. I think Lee Grace, look, I gave him so many plaudits throughout the week, throughout the last couple of weeks. He's in my team of the year. I think Lopez has actually been nominated for player of the year. Rightly so, in my opinion. Really good player. Uh, then you have Joey O'Brien. Well, like, what, a, what, what a player. What an accomplished player, especially in this league. Like He could easily play League 1, League 2 now. After you know, still I think uh, I think he's that good. He he doesn't do a lot of running. I think Grace and Lopez do a bit of a doggy walk, and you know, but they have a great balance there. You're looking in the middle. You have Gary O'Neill. Uh, you have you've obviously uh, Jack Bourne. You've Arden McInniff. So I think that speaks for itself, really. You know, you're gonna have Graham Book. You're gonna have Graham Book in there. You're gonna have uh, Arden Grant. So, that's, yeah. that's interesting though just when you go through the two of them like we pick Rovers team just like that whereas with Dundalk we're saying if they're going to play that system in which Philippa has played 
we're kind of a bit at odds and ends a little bit with it. And we're kind of going, is that balance? Is that balance? Is that yeah. balance? That's the concern I would have for Dundalk in this match a little bit. Like, if I was Filippo, I'd go the 4 3 3 because for me, Dundalk look far better balanced side. Duffy left, maybe Kolovic right or Kelly right. Yeah. Then you have McElhenney in midfield, maybe with Slogga and uh, what's his name? Shields sitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just think it's, they look far better balanced in, in that way. And I think it would give them a better chance. Now, maybe Filippo will do that, but the signs suggest that he won't. Just looking at as well, the Rovers' top scorers. This is league and cup, not Europe. Jack Burns on nine, Graham Burks on nine, Greens on seven, and McAniff is on six. And then you look at uh, Dundalk and you go, Huben's on ten, who's out, obviously. Duffy seven, Macmillan five, Flores four. So Rovers look like they've been better spread over all the goal scorers in their team as well, don't they? On what we've seen. Now, a lot of that with Dundalk, you would say they've rotated a lot more as well. Yeah. Rovers have more or less had the same core group, the same core team. And I think Dundalk have rotated an awful lot more in the league, which has been a detriment a little bit to themselves, hasn't it? Yeah, look, I think... Oh, I won't look too much into the goal scorers or stuff like that. I still think, like, if you put the two of these on paper, like, w- probably two of the best sides you're going to come up against, it's, you could nearly toss a coin. And that, that that's that's the situation. It's a cup final. You're always going to toss a coin. But, like, last year, Dundalk were obviously favourites. Mm-hmm. Uh, having Ron Tom in the league and having won the EA Cup and you know, going for the treble. Uh, it's mad to think now they have a new manager and they're in this limbo, like considering they were a penalty kick away from the treble last year. So, you know, it just shows you how quick, like, you know, if they won a treble, Vinnie Peart was the best man ever in Dundalk. And, you know, here we are now talking about a year later and he's gone six months or whatever it is now. So, it, it is, it, it's a strange one. It just shows you football doesn't, you know what I mean? The, you, didn't, you can take nothing for granted. You have to enjoy the good moments. But I'm looking at it and I'm saying, for me, I'm going to go with Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier that Rovers finished 22 points ahead of the dock in the league. I think that means absolutely dog shit in the cup final, to be honest with you. It means nothing. Um a lesser team can win in a cup final and on paper Dundalk aren't particularly lesser than Dundalk, than Shamrock Rovers at mm. all. Um, I have a feeling they're going to have a serious hunger going into this match against Dundalk. There's a lot of personalities, a lot of characters, a lot of leaders in that dressing room and on the day they're well capable of winning this match. I just have a feeling, I just have a feeling Dundalk are going to nick this. I don't know why but I, it could go to penalties as well. Um, Rovers do look the most settled side as we've went through the teams and we're looking and we're kind of going, oh, that looks a bit unbalanced for Dundalk and Rovers are very balanced. We went through their team in two seconds. But, um, you know, there's big players on the, in that Dundalk team. They've done it before. They've been there before. A lot more than Shamrock Rovers, by the way, let's be honest yeah. about it. Yeah. So, um, for me, it's going to be tight. It could go either way. Whoever wins it, like it would be a fantastic season in the end because it's funny how you talk about Dundalk, but if they win this match, um, to win a trophy in a season by their standards would be fantastic this season. Oh, yeah. If Rovers win it, Dundalk twice in a row in a cup final, win the league, it would lay down a serious marker as well. But just about Dundalk for me, Keane, just about, I think. Yeah, look, you can toss a coin on it. Uh, or got Rovers, you went Dundalk. It'll, look, it'll... One of us will be right. <laughs> It's it's a good game. It's just a shame we can't be there. It really is. That's a huge thing because me and you, for example, we would have been at that last year as well. It was yeah. a great occasion. I was even at the women's final as well, which was a good occasion. I know there wasn't as many people in. It was actually a very good game that point. <laughs> it was actually a very good game. That was a class yeah. game between Wexler and Piment as well. So the whole day like is, is brilliant. Like. Uh, so guys, that's it. Please like, subscribe and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. The match is on at 20 to 7 on Sunday, by the way, which is a bit strange. But um, we'll leave it there. So, Keen, thanks again. No, Bora, thanks very much, bud.